Welcome to SourceCAD. In this video, I'll show you step-by-step -step method of making this 3D part using BricsCAD modeling. So, let's get started. Alright, so I'll start with BricsCAD modeling and right now I'm here on the Get Started screen. I'll click on this new drawing and now let's begin making this. So, here I'll start by hiding this palette for now and I'll start with a circle. So right now I'm in the top view as you can see I'm in my top view that's XY plane also. So I'll just go to the circle tool on the draw panel and I'll start by making the very first circle of radius 5 unit. So I'll type 5 and enter. Now here's the thing in this case I am using the default inches as the unit and you can use any other unit as well if you want to even if you use millimeter or some other unit, the workflow will be exactly the same. So I'm not focusing on units rather than I'm focusing on 3D modeling tools which are required for making this part. So we have our circle of radius 5. Now let's go to this modeling panel and I'll select this creation and select extrude from the flyout. All right, now before I extrude this, I'll change my view. So I'll just go to this option here, the view option, and I'll change it to this isometric view. All right, and now let's click on the boundary, press enter, and type a height of five unit and press enter again. All right, so a height of five unit is added here. Now, in this case, well, we have this drawing in wireframe, and this is not how I want my drawing. So I'll just right click here, and I'll select visual style and I'll change it to modeling. Now this is the view which I'll use for now. Okay, so I have this. Now the first thing that I'm gonna do here is I'll add the fillet. So I'll go to this direct modeling option and I'll select this 3D fillet. All right, select the edge, which is this one. Now press enter and specify the radius value. So in this case, well, you can specify a radius in a dynamic way just by moving your cursor, but that's not the point here. I just want to specify exact radius and that's two units. So I'll type two and I'll press enter and that's the two unit radius applied here. Okay, the next thing is a circle right here on the top of this. So for that, once again, I'll go to the circle option from the draw panel and I'll go to this top plane and now as you can see when I move my cursor to this top plane the plane will be highlighted now this is the default behavior and though my cursor is here and this is the plane if I move it here the selected plane will be highlighted now that's happening because of dynamic UCS and that option is right here on the status bar so if you don't have this dynamic UCS active then activate it because if I keep it deactivated like this and if I move here just look at this the plane won't highlight so you've got to make sure that you select this DUCS on the dynamic UCS option and this should be checked if you want to select any plane so I've selected this plane now I'll click this center point and we are now ready to add our next circle. So in this case, I'll use a radius of two unit one more time. So I'll type two and I'll just press enter and we now have this circle. Okay, so I'll basically use this circle to create a small groove here. But before I do that, I just need to imprint this circle on this 3D solid because this press pull tool won't recognize this circle directly. So for that, I'll go to solid editing panel. I'll click this drop down and I'll select imprint. Now I'll select the solid. So I'll click on the solid and now I'll select this circle. All right. And now the command line will prompt us with this message. Do you want to delete source object? Well, yes, I want to delete the actual circle and we are done. Now press escape and we now have this thing imprinted here, which we can now use. So I'll go to press pull. I'll select this area. And as you can see, this area is now highlighted. I'll press enter and we just need to add a depth here. So I'll just move it down and I'll add a depth of 0.2 unit and I'll press enter. That's it. That's added. Now we just need to add tiny radii here as well. So I'll once again go to this 3D fillet and I'll add a fillet here as well as here. And I'll just press enter. And for the radius, I'll use 0 0.05 and I'll press enter again. So that radius is also added. Okay. 
So this part of the drawing is complete. Let's go to the top view now. So I'll just go to this navigation option and I'll select the top view. And once again, I'll go to circle and now I'll make a circle just by tracking this plane and I'll maybe, I'll not track this actually. I'll just, this time I'll deactivate dynamic UCS. And now I'll go to this point I'll now track it like this and right here we have an intersection point using this as a reference I'll make my circle of diameter 2 or radius 1 so I'll simply type 1 and I'll press enter so there we have it we have a circle now let's orbit our drawing so I'll just orbit my drawing like this and you can press and hold shift key and then click your middle mouse wheel to orbit your drawing just like this so that way you can just orbit it in 3d space okay so now I'll extrude this as well so let's do that I'll go to extrude I'll select the circle and enter and now we just need to add a height so in this case I'll add a random height of 10 unit there we have it now this one is a random height because I just want it long enough to pass through this shape completely and well we'll just subtract it but for now that's fine so i've got this one now i'll make multiple copies of this along the circular path and for that i'll go to modify panel and i'll select this polar array now i'll select the solid and enter now i'll select this center actually any of these centers is fine so select any center point and we have six objects now if you want more you can go to items and add more but i'm okay with six objects for now so I'll simply press enter to exit out of this okay now we'll subtract it so I'll go to this boolean tool which is uh, well subtract we have three boolean tools here union subtract and intersect I'll select subtract now I'll select the main geometry which is this enter then all these six objects select them one by one and press enter there we have it it's all clean now okay so now we need clean fillets here as well so a small fillet for all of these and for that I'll go to this 2d fillet option now though we can use this 3d fillet option but this 3d fillet is a bit limiting it won't let you select multiple edges at once that's why I'll just go to this 2d fillet option and the first thing that I'm going to change here is radius so I'll go to radius and I'll just change it to 0 0.2 unit all right now we can select one of the edges which is this one and I'll press enter okay now look at this we have this chain option I'll select this chain option and this will allow me to select all the edges which are connected tangentially so they're all connected tangentially and they're now selected now similarly all I need to do is click on one of these edges and it will select all the chain edges like this I'll do that for all the remaining edges here so this this and this as well and it's also done so all the edges are now selected and now I'll simply press enter and we have fillet applied on all of these edges now finally we just need to shell it actually we need more features here but first let's shell it so to add the shell feature I'll go to solid editing and from this drop down I'll select shell now I'll select the solid and then I'll click on this face okay now we need to press enter and specify the thickness so the thickness will be 0 0.15 so that's the thickness which I'm using I'll press enter and we now have this object shelled okay let's press escape key to exit out of this command and if I orbit my drawing I can well now show you how it has shelled this object so we now have this kind of hollow object okay it has removed solid from inside okay so that's done now let's add the feature inside this as well and to do that once again I'll select circle so I'll go to circle and I'll just select this but look at this now this face is not highlighted for that we need dynamic UCS so again I'll go to DUCS or dynamic UCS I'll activate that I'll go to this face and using this center well I'll make a circle Now that's really a big circle it looks like kind of big uh, but that should be an artifact of well our graphics card so I'll just repeat it one more time I'll just go to this plane this center all right now that looks kind of okay so I'll just make a circle of radius 2 units so I'll just type 2 and enter and we now have the circle which is not even visible so I'll just change my visual style so I'll right click here I'll go to visual style and I'll change it to maybe conceptual 
is still not visible so visual style let's make it wireframe and actually we are not even able to see it in wireframe visual style so instead of while well, changing the visual style now I'll just make it one more time using a visual style which is clean like hidden so I'll use the hidden visual style and one more time I'll just go to circle I'll go to this plane I'll select the center now I can see this clearly okay so okay 2 is pretty big for this all right it looks like I should use a radius value of maybe 1.5 all right so I'll use that so 1.5 and enter okay now that looks clean here we have that circle which we needed and now we can extrude this so once I have the circle I can now change the visual style back to modeling and well once again it's not visible so let me change it back to well hidden okay now once again I'll just have to imprint it so I'll go to this option and I'll select imprint and I'll select the 3d solid and then I'll select this is sketch and well it's imprinted I'll also delete the source object so I'll click on yes and we are now ready to use this feature for press pull but before we press pull this feature I'll just imprint another line here so I'll just go to line tool and I'll just go to this point and I'll just join it like this I'll just press enter again and I'll join it here as well so now I've got this kind of line well actually this one I'll now well select these two and I'll also imprint this right here on 3d solid so let's just quickly do that so again I'll go to imprint and I'll select the 3d solid and I'll select this object and I'll select yes and let's do that one more time so here and I'll select yes all right so these are now imprinted and I'll actually extrude only this part of the drawing okay let's do that so I'll go to this extrude option and I'll select this area I'll press enter and I'll add a height of two units so I'll simply type two and I'll press enter and look at this this feature is now extruded and we just need to shell it just like this main object so I'll go to shell and I'll select this part of the drawing and this face also I'll press enter and for the shell offset distance I'll use 0 0.1 and I'll press enter and we have the shell now I'll press escape to exit this command and the shell has been created just like this and now we can actually change the visual style so I'll just right click here I'll go to visual style and I'll change it to modeling okay and you can see this feature finally for the grips let's add more extrusions here now one more time I'll go to the top view and I'll just add a circle so circle tool and I'll add a circle using this midpoint that's fine and uh, I'll use a circle of 0.25 as the radius so 0 0.25 should be fine and actually it's really big so I'll just double click here and I'll make it 0 0.15 alright now that looks about good so you can change your radii from here as well and here it is the circle is here now let's orbit this drawing and here's the circle and I'll extrude this so I'll once again hide the properties I'll select the circle and I'll go to extrude and for height again 10 unit and enter all right so that's also extruded and one more time we need to make an array so I'll go to polar array select this and enter and I'll select this center point okay so we now have these arrays now we need to change number of objects here obviously so I'll go to items from the command line and I'll select 100 as number of items and enter okay that's too much we actually need to decrease this number so I'll go to items and I'll now make it 80 okay uh, let's bring it close and it looks about good but maybe we can move it even uh, to a smaller number actually we can just decrease this number to maybe 75 so I'll type 75 and enter and that looks about good so I'll use this number actually I'll use 76 objects just to keep it uniform so 76 here we have it so 76 objects and that's fine so I'll now press enter so we now have 76 objects okay finally we just need to subtract it one more time so I'll go to this subtract option I'll select the main object and enter then I'll just move it like this and I'll make a window crossing window to select all of these extrusions and I'll press enter again and finally we are done so it just created these kind of grooves everywhere in our drawing and this is basically kind of a grip so 
we now have this knob for us. So here it is in BricsCAD. In a similar way, you can use 3D environment to make different kind of objects in BricsCAD. So I hope you like this video. If you have questions related to this, feel free to let me know in the comment section and don't forget to share this video. I'll see you soon in another one.